Hi students, let's talk about a very important biotechnology method, and that is called gel electrophoresis. Uh, so gel electrophoresis is a way for scientists to see DNA. Um, so why is that important? It's because differences between individuals are because of differences in DNA sequences. Um, so the DNA sequences is actually what makes each person different, right? Um, so scientists do have a way to actually go and look at the DNA sequence, so like measure nucleotide by nucleotide what the DNA actually is, um, but that's really slow and it takes a lot of time and it's super expensive. Um, it's definitely not something we could do here in a high school biology class. Um, but there's something called gel electrophoresis, which is sort of a faster and easier way for us to see differences in DNA. Um, so we're not actually going to sequence the entire DNA when we do gel electrophoresis. Instead, we'll get a picture that looks something like this. Um, so what I want you to pay attention to in this picture are the white lines, which we call bands. So here are some arrows pointing to some of those different bands. And I hope what you can recognize is that some of them are bigger and some of them are smaller. And that's what we're looking for here in gel electrophoresis. We're essentially trying to see the difference in these size of these DNA bands and let's, that lets us see differences in DNA. Um, so it's very important to note that uh, this is a tool that scientists use in labs. So this is a way for us to, in a lab, look at DNA sequences or get an idea of what those DNA sequences are. This is not something that happens in your cells. Like you do not have a picture like this inside of your cells. No, not at all. This is a tool. That's why it's in the biotechnology section. Like this is something that we use to understand biology it's not something that's actually a part of our biology. Um, so how does gel electrophoresis work? Uh, so first thing first is we'll take some cells and we have to get that DNA out of the cells. Because remember, gel electrophoresis isn't happening inside of our cells as a tool. So uh, you'll like take some cells maybe from a cheek sample and suck all of the DNA out of those cells. And then you will do something that modifies the DNA in some way. So for example, you could cut the DNA into smaller pieces and or you could make copies of like certain parts of the DNA. And then you will take your little DNA bits and run them on a gel. So here we can see we have these little tiny, tiny pieces of DNA and we'll take those and we'll put them on this gel and run them is what we say. And we get this picture where we can see the bands of DNA. Okay, so the reason that this works, that gel electrophoresis works, um, it's because it uses electricity to separate pieces of DNA by size. So uh, this works because DNA is negatively charged. So this is a picture over here of a really tiny single-stranded DNA molecule. So we have like, here's one nucleotide, and here's the next nucleotide. Um, and remember that part of the nucleotides, there's three pieces, right? We have this phosphate group, we have a pento sugar, and we have a nitrogenous base. And so that's one nucleotide, another, another, et cetera. Um, and I hope what you can recognize is that on that phosphate group, there is a negative charge, right? So DNA is negatively charged, or sorry, phosphate is negatively charged. And because there's all of these phosphates in DNA, then DNA itself is also negatively charged. Um, so because of that, if we take some DNA and we expose it to an electrical field, um, the DNA is actually gonna move in that current, it's going to move through that electrical field. Um, and since DNA is negatively charged, it's going to move towards the positive side. Uh, so when we do this, we're always going to run our DNA samples through a gel. So the gel is going to look something like this. It looks very much like jello. It feels like jello. It's made of agarose, um, which is very similar to how gelatin works, except it's made from seaweed instead of from animal. Um, so this gel is a matrix. It's like a mesh. And that mesh is going to be used to help us separate the pieces of DNA. So here's um, sort of like a video to get us uh, like seeing how this works in time lapse. So sped up. So this is looking over top of a gel. And see how there's these like dark lines here? Those are called wells. So they're actually like little holes in the gel. And that's where we're going to put our DNA. We're going to put them inside of those little holes. And then we are going to add um, an electrical current, like so. So our DNA is going to start at the wells and then move down the gel. So let's see what happens. Here we go. So see how they're moving? See these little green lines? 
that's DNA, and you can actually see it moving in real time as this is sped up. Um, there we go. And can you see how in this um, column, how there's more than one line? That's because there's a lot of little pieces of DNA that are different sizes in this first line. But in the second one, there's just like three little pieces of DNA. So, and I hope what you can also recognize in this picture is how some of those DNA bands moved further than others. So that's like really the key concept here with gel electrophoresis. It's understanding why do some of those little pieces of DNA move further through the gel than others. So to understand that, I have a silly analogy for you here. So um, once again, here's a picture of that agarose gel. And at the top, we have the wells, which are just like little holes in the gel. And we're going to put our DNA in the holes. Um, and then by convention, we always uh, have the negative electrode at the top and the positive electrode at the bottom. And that's so that when we add the electricity, the DNA is gonna move down the gel instead of up, because otherwise it would move up and it'd run off the gel. Okay. And remember that this gel is a mesh, it's like a matrix. So the way that I like to think about this is I like to think of um, a good analogy is you can think of the mesh of the gel is almost like um, a laser maze. Uh, like if you were, in a movie and you were trying to like steal a diamond out of a vault you might have to like you know sneak your way through like a complicated laser system so you don't like set off the alarm um so you can think of that's what this mesh is like it's like all these little strings that are forming um this complicated mesh that the dna is going to have to sneak its way through so to help us understand this analogy we're going to go with the idea that we are cat burglars trying to steal something right um in fact i'm going to do it with literal cats because you know cat burglar. So uh, there's going to be three cat burglars. We have uh, a big lion, a little medium orange cat, and a little little tiny kitten. So all three cats are loaded into the well at the start. And then we're going to add our electrical field. And the cats are going to move down the gel, right, uh, towards the positive electrode because cats, just like DNA, are negative. So they're going to be attracted to the positive end. So I want you to think, which cat do you think is going to get through that laser maze fastest? Which one's going to move the most quickly? The tiny kitten, the medium cat, or the big cat? Yeah, let's see. Oh, there we go. So the little tiny kitten is going to make it the furthest. And that's because that little kitten is small and agile and can like sneaky sneak through those little laser maze pieces. Whereas the big line would have to like really like slowly move its way through. So in other words, the smaller the cat was, the faster it was able to get through the laser maze. Kind of a similar idea with DNA. The smaller the piece of DNA is, the faster it's gonna move through the gel. So your key point here, um, smaller pieces of DNA move faster. Or in other words, they move further through a gel than large pieces because the smaller pieces are sneaky. So they can sneak their way through that gel matrix faster. Um, gel electrophoresis, the point of it is it separates DNA fragments by size. And that lets us figure out um, a way to like look at the sequence of DNA because first we had to like cut up the DNA into little pieces, right? And so if the sequences are different, then the size of those little pieces is going to be different. And that's what we can actually visualize with the gel electrophoresis. And then finally, we get that, that picture that looks like that pattern of lines. Um, and we call that a DNA fingerprint. So it might look something like this. So uh, people use these in crime, uh, like in forensics a lot. So let's look at here. We have a DNA fingerprint of some evidence left at a crime scene. Um, and then we have DNA evidence from like the survivor and from three criminals. And if you look, criminal three has the exact same DNA fingerprint as the evidence left at the crime scene. Um, so everyone has unique DNA sequences means everyone's going to have a unique DNA fingerprint. So that's pretty strong evidence that criminal three was at the crime scene. So, all right, so that is gel electrophoresis in a nutshell. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to do it in class soon. So get excited.